One of the number one reasons I see for stalls in the gym is that people simply do not train hard enough. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blah here. I thought I would chat with you guys and gals a little bit about this today. Now when I say hard enough, uh, people don't always understand what I mean by that. What I mean by that is that people simply do not push hard enough on their individual sets. I'm not saying they don't do enough volume. Because if anything, I see plenty of guys who do too much volume and they still make zero progress, no gains. And before people chime in and say, you're an advanced lifter, you barely progress. No, I'm talking about novice lifters making no progress. Uh, you know, in, in other words, if you're not even a ripped 155 pounds and you struggle to rep 135 on the bench and you're just stuck there. Okay, that's what we are talking about. We're not talking about advanced lifters who bench over 300 pounds and deadlift over five and all that. All right, so <laughs> we're talking about these people who just don't make any progress. They're, they're still stuck looking and performing like non-lifters. Or they make a little gains and then everything stalls. And, and that's largely because for some people, new gains can still be gotten even with, with modest training effort just because, you know, that's the nature of the human body. So when we're talking about this, it's about their individual effort. It is not, hey, I'm not doing enough. Hey, I'm not cheating enough. I'm not yelling enough. Okay, because I, I want to be clear when you guys watch me train, I don't get psyched up. I don't use pre-workouts. I don't even eat before I train, by the way. Uh, I have music on, but it's not, you know, most hardcore music. You know, you just listen to blues or some rock, you know. Stuff I enjoy listening to, just kind of being in my zone. So when we talk about hard, we're not talking about did I scream and psych myself up? Because you can have somebody slap you seven times in the middle of a set and scream at you and throw something at you, and you can get up and throw your water bottle across the room at the end of the set. Still doesn't mean that you did any work. Okay? None of that means you did any work. By doing hard work, notice what you're seeing on some of these sets. Pretty good form, smooth form for the most part. Some of the reps get real hard. Like right there, it was getting heavy. What do you see me do? A nice long pause and then drive it up. I probably would not got, have gotten another rep after that. It slowed down a little. Same thing, we watched the incline benching. We're, we're about a rep from failure on those. The other stuff I am reaching failure, like you saw those curls, saw those, those uh, weighted chins. Those were failure. I couldn't do another rep. Now, notice we didn't mean you have to swing and cheat. This is what I mean by hard training. Hard training doesn't mean that you cheat and swing because that's actually working less hard. In other words, if, if a set is starting to get fatiguing and then you start swinging around and cheating and bouncing, that is the exact opposite of hard work. Okay? So we need to be clear here when we say that. That is literally doing the opposite. Why? Because you're taking the work off the muscles. When I'm bench pressing, I want my pectorals and my triceps to be doing the work. When I do a curl, I want my biceps to be doing the work. When I do a pull up, I'm not trying to swing and cheat. Same thing with a curl, I'm not trying to do a hip extension. We want the muscles we're training to actually get the stimulus, the tension. Okay, by training hard, it means that the muscles themselves are getting fatigued to the point where they can no longer handle the workload. And if you start taking the weight off of them and you're cheating and you, say, so you start bouncing reps off your chest, okay, let's say you start doing those things. Well, that's not hard work. You just literally did the opposite. You literally took work off of the muscles because you didn't want to work hard. Do we understand the difference? You're doing a curl. When you are doing a curl, if it starts to feel a little bit heavy and you start swinging and laying back and cheating and doing all this stuff, you are literally not working hard. You were saying, oh, this might get too hard. My biceps might actually get some stimulus. They might actually grow. Oh my God, they're starting to work. I better take them out of the equation and start using my hips. God forbid we should let the muscle we are trying to, to use actually do the work. And that's the point. And I'm not saying for advanced lifters a little bit of body English 
can't have its place. So let's, let's be clear on that. We are not saying that. But a lot of the people who are doing this, that's not what they're doing. Now, talking about advanced bodybuilders here who have 10 years of experience under the bar and great progress. We are talking about people who don't have gains. They don't have experience. They don't have the mind-muscle connection to know how to utilize those tools and do those things. They don't have the experience. They don't have the body feeling, the body awareness. And so in that case, it is absolutely not the same thing. They are just cheating. And just because you see an influencer doing it who uses 55-gallon drums of anabolics, who doesn't have experience, and I'm not going to name any names, there are definitely some new popular ones, they're new lifters. They don't have a lot of experience. They're flopping and cheating, and they're still getting jacked, but how much stuff are they on? If they were natural, would those guys have any real size, or would they be below average? Well, I'm going to go with probably below average because they don't even know how to train. They're just flopping around. And that's well and good if people are going to use 55-gallon drums of magical supplements. But if you're not, it's probably not going to work as well. Not saying you won't get some stimulus. Well, let's come back over to the point. People are not training hard. They're simply not taking their individual sets close enough to failure to create the fatigue necessary to reach all the upper threshold muscle fibers. You're not getting to the deeper muscle fibers, the ones that have the most growth potential. And when you first start out, you can get away with that to some extent because all the muscle fibers grow. But if you look at research and data, the longer you train, the fewer muscle fibers you have that will still grow. And when you become an advanced lifter, only those deepest fibers are going to grow. All those intermediate ones, okay, they stop growing. So this is why people are starting to hit plateaus at certain points. They get to just a certain point that everything stops. Okay. Because they're simply not fatiguing the other muscle fibers, the, the deeper fibers. And those fibers get deeper and deeper the longer you train. They're just simply not creating enough tension on them because they're stopping sets way early or they start cheating, let form break down, they get tired, they get a pump, they quit in the middle of their sets, okay? And they just simply don't get enough growth stimulus. And then they think they can make up for it by doing 25 sets. When there's some other really jack guy over there doing five sets, who's three times their size. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.